Hi YouTubers, it's George. I'm in the garage today. It's pouring me rain. I was going to do some lays work outside, make some wooden bowls and one thing or another, but it's chucking it down with rain. And it's getting a bit like a production line in here. That's uh, a new loading coil I made for my vertical HF and antenna or aerial. And uh, <laughs> guess what these are <laughs> I've been making quite a few of these I've had a few requests from people to, for me to make them and uh, yeah so I've started <laughs> crazy isn't it and uh, they, they're, they're not very expensive to make actually and I'm quite pleased with the way they're coming on so far for cutting the main hole for the SO239 socket we use with these cone drills or stepped drills I think they call it and uh, for that makes a mess though the metal goes everywhere uh, I'm using some scrap aluminium uh, lengths and uh, what I got them from um, while I was out walking I found this laying on the grass and it's a damaged exhaust pipe from a, a motorbike or something and this is aluminium and it's scrap basically so I cut the aluminium out of here cut a slice then cut it and then flattened it and then to make these brackets I'm trying to keep the cost down for, for the people who want them and also for uh, you know I'll make a couple of quid on them sort of thing uh, I quite enjoy making stuff um, as long as I make a few pound or get a few beers out of it I don't mind I'm not here to run a business or anything and make 50% profit margin and uh, the dearest thing on these is really the the connector and the, the bolt and the adapter you know these adapters they're the biggest cost and uh, a bit of wire and a bit of this stuff and, uh, I've got to vacuum up now before I start on the next bracket otherwise there'll be metal dust everywhere I'm going to talk about ham radio aerials and uh, one of the problems I have is when I've been making coils for base loaded vertical HF aerials and things like that is testing them and the simple reason is the garden for a start with is not um, it's slightly less than 30 feet long I'm standing at the bungalows and it's concrete and slabs so when I run my round radials out I put four out they're not actually touching the ground or the soil so and when I'm moving around with the nano VNA the SWR can go up and down so it's very difficult the other thing we get is the wind here um, you know when you've got a vertical aerial up and it's a portable aerial it's a real bugger and uh, I have got my telescopic fiberglass pole here this goes up to 10 meters 30 feet and then I've got a 49 to 1 ballon there which I use and uh, there's a ground stake there but it's a combination of the wind and the size of the garden being as a bungalow I can't really have any aerials on the roof my washing line HF aerial here uh, runs to another ballon sitting there there's a ballon and then the counterpoise is that wire that runs along the guttering that one there and that one there runs along the guttering they're not ideal but I did do get a good SWR on uh, the 40 meter band but this is a problem so when I do my VNR graphs they can look a bit peculiar it's because simple reason is I'm doing the best I can now because of all this rain we've had 
can see it's wet. It's poor with rain. The fields locally are absolutely sodden because the local soil is mainly clay around here. So everything's against me when I'm testing and making coils for aerials. I need to get out in the field somewhere to do proper testing with all the ground planes out and uh, one thing or another. But it's not possible. It's um, gusting quite bad as well. <laughs> it's not constant uh, wind. It's gusting. It doesn't help. You need a wind chimes in people's gardens and things. I thought I'd just show you my portable aerial system for when I'm doing ham radio. And the aerial system will go in this yoga mat bag. And in the bag, I've got the loading coil, which is my old one, a telescopic aerial, coaxial cable, notebook, tent pegs, and the tripod. Right, uh, so this is my kit, and the bag's basically empty. And there's also the counterpoise. Now I'll go over this. Uh, this is tent pegs, a screwdriver, and I think there's a small spanner in there. And um, this tripod is used, um, you can buy them very, very cheap, and I've got two of these. And I'll just put it up. Let's put the camera down a minute. Apologies. That's the tripod. And these tripods are very cheap to buy. £10, £16, something like that. And these are used for when you're doing selfies. And they're selfie, uh, taking pictures of yourself, for selfie lighting. And they're telescopic. You can raise them up and down, the section slide, like that. Okay, now, in the blue bag is the ground radials or counterpoise, whatever you like to call them. Tip them out. Come on, out you come. This is a trouble doing everything single-handed. There we go. They're out. Now, for the counterpoise bracket, this is just a square M10, I think it is, M12 square washer that you can get from any hardware store. That goes on the top there. And then the coil goes on here. This is the tap coil. I just swivel it on like that. And the taps, like that green one and that red one, that's for the 40 metre band and the red ones are for the 20 metre band. Okay. Now it's hand tightened. Now the telescopic aerial I purchased and it's uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 sections or 12 sections including the bottom one. It goes in there and then you can just slide them up and down to set your SWR um, and what I do is I keep a record of how many sections are put up and whether it's six and a half or ten and a half or whatever for whichever band. Now the ground radials are five meters long and it's just bits of plastic and they all go in here and these are all car electrical connectors. 
so you just that goes in there okay and I'll stretch it out and they're five meters in length so what's that that's a quarter wave on um, 14 meg isn't it and that's basically it and then there's the cable here which goes in to the socket which goes in here like any SO2 it's in a right angle adapter so the cable dangles down Now there's a couple of bits I don't always carry and this is this one which I can actually put in the, in the cable line and it's a common mode choke and this stops any RF coming back down the actual cable into the radio or if I want to use some odd bands and this coil doesn't really match I've got one of these battery powered automatic tuner units which I can insert but as I say I've, I've never really needed it and I've only needed that once in addition to this kit I can actually fit my new coils onto the same system these coils here I can attach them to replace this in the same manner this one fits on now Radio ham or radiometer uh, is a bit like fishing and it's, why I say it's a bit like fishing is because you always um, don't know what you're going to catch or listen to or, or talk to and for example you've got your fishing bag which is your aerial bag You've got your fishing line which is your coax you've got your fishing rod which is the vertical antenna this is your fishing reel and your log book which is sitting down there which is an ordinary notebook is your record of your catches now what's the bait well the bait is really your call sign and where you live like if you live in the UK you might get people calling you from sorry you might get people from Italy and they may be trying to call you Italy to the UK etc so that's how it, it, it's a bit like fishing you some days you can go out and don't speak to anybody and other days you get loads and the furthest or other way from you is the, the biggest catch and in terms of um, uh, weight of the fish it's equivalent to the least amount of power you can talk to them you know on five watts that's probably like a 40 pound fish <laughs> it's very very worthwhile and it's very relaxing because you can go and sit on top of hills um, the only difference is between radio ham and fishing is a simple thing is with fishing it involves water with radio ham it in includes beer <laughs> So that's the similarity, I suppose. It's both liquids. So thanks for watching this video. Hope you enjoy it. And um, when the wind drops and the noise drops and everything else, I'm hoping to do proper um, V&A curves of what the actual signal, what the SWR looks like. I'll probably put one on the end to give you an example.